is it going, everyone? It's your favorite apostates here. I am McKay. I'm Jordan. And we're back with the one. Uh, the one that we have been people for months. Not longer than that, since we started on TikTok. For months. So, yeah. And we would get questions about this one all the time. Um... So, as you can tell by the thumbnail and the title of this video, um, it's going to be a little uh, more on the adult side of conversations, so obviously uh, we're going to be talking about some more stuff of sexual nature, Um, but we want to thank a lot of the people who interacted with us, asking questions on Discord. Shout out to the Discord we had like a whole ass conversation about this this afternoon. Today's Sunday. But um yeah, and Jordan got like a million replies on her story about this thing. So on Instagram. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, go do that because I yeah. ask questions and your question might end up in our video. So Yeah. At Jordan and McKay on Instagram. Um you can find a link to our Discord in the description. Uh go hang out. There's a lot of cool people there. Um, so anyway, we're going to be talking about the fabled choking today. Um, and to kick it off, uh, I just wanted to kind of illustrate w- one little point about soaking. The way that I found out about soaking, um, let's see, I was working at a tire shop. I think it was in 2014 in Colorado where, where I was living. And one day my coworker comes up to me and this guy, he was a little off the handle like a couple weeks beforehand. He was like, yeah, I was hella drunk. And uh, right now I did a couple of lines before I came in. I was like, okay, cool. Anyway, (laughs) he was chill. Otherwise, he really liked me. He was a really cool guy. Uh, But one day he comes in and he's like, yo, McKay. He knew I was Mormon at the time. He's like, yo, McKay, uh, you want to soak? I was like, what? He's like, you know, soaking, all the Mormons do it. I had no clue what he was talking. I was a whole ass adult at this time. Whole no clue, a, a whole ass Mormon <laughs> adult. I had no clue what he was talking about. And then he explained it to me and um, I I could not believe it. And from that point until this year, I thought it was fake. Like, I thought it was 100% an urban legend. Um, But since being in the Exmo community, um, people have illustrated otherwise, that it is not just a joke. So that (laughs) that was how I found out about soaking. It was eye-opening, to say the least. I did not hear about soaking until 2015. And it was not, it was my freshman year of college and I had not previously heard about it. And I was going, I was at the University of Utah, which is BYU's rival school. Ooh, in Salt Lake City. In Salt Lake. And so, you know, part of our, the whole part of being a U is shitting on BYU. So I was also in a sorority. And so the conversation came up because I was still mostly Mormon at the time and people were like oh yeah soaking and I was like what the hell is that so I got it explained to me by some college friends when I was at the U and I have never been the same (laughs) so it in ex-Mormon circles I feel like it's not even ex-Mormons People like ex Mormons will mention it like off the cuff on like Instagram or yeah. TikTok, and then even even in our video last week, I mentioned it, and some people were like, "Do I want to know about soaking?" I'm like, "Oof." So it happens like a lot of times unintentionally, and then people who either aren't familiar with Mormons or have like no like no even background on Mormonism and how insane it is. We'll hear about it and they're like, okay, what the hell? And then it just gains like an insane amount of traction, which is exactly what happened um, this year more than ever on oh, TikTok. Yeah. So, yeah. So by this time, if you have heard of soaking, you, you probably have heard somebody on TikTok or seen somebody post a TikTok um, 
Exmo Lex talks about it, um, at Funeral Potato Slut. That is not me editorializing. That is her handle. So <laughs> just putting that out there. Did so, a couple videos on it and expounded. But first off, what is soaking? Let's let's define it. Let's give it a definition. So we're trying to not get demonetized here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, we know we have accepted the risk. We know we run that risk. We run the risk, but we're. I'm going to try to put it in terms that aren't. What if I? Essentially, I'm looking. The idea is that uh, you put the sword in the scabbard. Okay. You put the arrow in the quiver. Those are both things that uh, I have no idea you put, what the hell you, you're You put talking. the knife in the little chef's block, or, or I don't know. Yes. Uh, you park the car in the garage, you, but... Yeah. The caveat, sorry, and this is important, no movement. There can't be any movement. There can't be any movement once you've placed the item in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So once once the squash is in the boiling pot, it can only come out. That's it. There, it has to stay there. Okay, there can be no gyrating. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I didn't want to do this. This is yeah. so horrifying. Okay, so there's no movement. It's just hanging out there. Just hang. Just still, soaking. Still, very still. Um, okay. Yeah. Like the only time movement should happen is to upon remove. completion. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever that is, there's no definition. There's on... no defining that. And like it would take an act of God, like an earthquake, in order for some type of movement to happen. Okay. Or in this case. I think case, we'll get into that a little bit Jump more. pumping, which jump we'll pumping. get into a little yeah. bit later. Okay. So that is basically you stick it in, let it soak. And then... Like a casserole. Remove it. Casserole. How are you making casseroles? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's just the first thing that came to mind. It makes um, no sense, but... Number one question most people have. Why? That is the big... That's all anybody ever wants to know, right? Well, I'll tell you why, because... Within, if you've been with us for a while, you know that there are very strict rules within Mormonism, especially surrounding sexual activity. And so when you place such strict, not even guidelines, such, I don't even know what to call it. Rules. They're when you rules. place They're such commandments. strict commandments on teenagers, hormonal teenagers especially, um, regarding sexuality, we start to kind of build up some repressed feelings. And so you're looking for any way... Any sort of outlet. Any way that you can justify doing something sexual without having to confess to a bishop. So you know, like, if you guys have been with us for a minute, you know that if you do anything sexual, including touching yourself... Yeah. you Just the, the rundown... You cannot view pornography. You can't masturbate. You can't have, definitely not have sexual relations with anybody at all. No, and we're not like, um, we're talking period. Yeah. Like not even, like no groping outside the clothes. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. Some okay. people, yeah. And Mormonism is a fundamentalist religion where some people will interpret it all the way down to you should not be kissing or holding hands. Um, those are more kind of extreme cases, but um, I'd say there's a whole lot less of that. That's yeah, more out of the norm now. But this is well, and this is kind of in Mormonism. This is kind of where things get wonky because there, there's the line, right? The line is blatantly in one of the handbooks within Mormonism is you can't have sex before marriage yep. and there are consequences for that. So take, for example, if you have a young couple in their early 20s, they're engaged, they're waiting to get married. They know the line. The line is you can't have sex before marriage. For most, for a lot of Mormons, that's the line. And so if we can kind of toe that line, 
they a little like, bit yeah and get a little creative oh absolutely. with how we're doing things then we don't necessarily need to talk to the bishop so that's what we're trying to avoid yeah. here is having to confess and this is yeah and i think w- the idea with this would be like you're a couple and you want to go and be sealed in the temple which you can only do if you maintain sexual purity if you confess to your bishop that you have had some sort of sexual encounter with your partner, who at the time is just your fiance, then that would disqualify you for a period of time, up to a year sometimes, um, from being sealed in the temple, which is like social just destruction. Like you can, it's really hard to come back after that you want to avoid that at all costs because if you if you're engaged and your family finds out like you set a date for getting married in the temple and then go to the bishop confess that you did something inappropriate and then you got to move out that wedding date a year everybody's like oh Uh, yeah we know what happened yep they can figure it out pretty easily and that's pretty taboo um so so so, that's the why yeah those are the why well a part of the why somebody somebody else was wondering they were like well, why don't, like a lot of people at Bible college or whatever, they'll just use other methods of entry and it's they, it's all cool, whatever. Um, but the thing with that is in the 70s, the church came out and they were like, okay, blanket statement, if you're doing stuff with the booty and with the mouth, then that is an abomination to God and you need to talk to your bishop and start the repentance process. They've never since rescinded that, but they it is one of the few times where they have come out and said, this is, you can't do this. It's not a way to skirt the rules. It is the same, like, so obviously people got to get a little more creative. Um, my parents' friends, when they were attending Rick's College before it was BYU-Idaho, um, they knew of people who would drive down to Las Vegas on a Friday night get married, have their fun, get the marriage annulled, and be back for class on Monday. <laughs> this is a real thing. This is not yeah. just his, this no, is this not is, anecdotal. This happens were, a lot. Yeah, my parents' friends, they were thinking of maybe doing this <laughs> before the church came out and said, no, that is still wrong, regardless of whether you're legally married. You're just, the intent is to get it annulled. So when you, you can't, do Another that. example of skirting the rule. Yeah, exactly. So the next thing is <laughs> the one that is arguably the most absurd is soaking. <laughs> so that's kind of the why of how people get to that point where they're like, I still want to have a temple wedding, but uh, my my wiggly bits are exploding, basically. So, but it... I get why people ask, because on the other hand, it doesn't answer the question of why Mormons think that this is not the fun stuff. Like, why Mormons think that this isn't actually committing the act. Like, it, And that's a question I can't answer, because yeah. it doesn't make any sense to me either. Like, it doesn't, like, and deep down, most Mormons who are participating in this know it's no different. Yeah. Um, I think you would be hard pressed to find somebody who really thinks there's a difference between soaking and just doing the deed itself. Um, So that part, I don't know that part. I don't know how to answer. I think that's going to vary by the person, but yeah. And there may be some coercion from a male partner to a female partner, like, Oh, well it's not the real deal or so there's, there's a lot of other things that come into play that you just really don't know about um, that are really hard. And it's also, I mean, it's it's funny. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But this is what some people have to live with. Like, they're so, like, this is the sexual repression that the church has imposed on them for many from, like, eight years old on. So. They're desperate. They're desperate to participate in that very normal part of their life. And uh, they some will go to great lengths to be able to justify it. So anyway. I think we answered a few of these, but here's a few more questions <laughs> that you guys asked. 
um, on Instagram. A good question is what qualifies as movement? If she squeezes <laughs> or squirms, does that count? That's a great question. That's a good question. Yeah, because uh, nobody's going in with a straight face. Kegels? That's for sure. Whoa. whoa. Yeah. Just a thought. I don't know. At Early in the morning, back last March, there was a 5.8 magnitude earthquake here in Utah. Mm-hmm. Some lucky soakers, man. Would have been the right time. Would have been the right time. It was also 7 a.m. though, so. <laughs> yeah. I, that was, I don't know. Morning soak. I guess. <laughs> like a Like a hot tea. Okay. Herbal tea, of course. Were your college mates knowledgeable that it could still lead to pregnancy? So uh, when I was at the U, I had a lot. I was in a sorority. So that just kind of speaks for itself. Okay. So we had these conversations a lot. And I would say soaking is also a product of the sex education that is provided here in Utah. And there is not comprehensive sex education here in Utah. So there's a lot of misunderstanding about these types of things. So especially when I was in college, there's a lot of like, like very, I don't know how to describe it. Like, You won't get pregnant if you do it standing up. You won't get pregnant if you do it while you're on your period. These types of things. So comprehensive sex ed, when I had it, when we lived in Colorado, answers those types of questions, typically. In Utah, kids don't have that. And so I think soaking kind of exists as a product of Mormonism, but... Utah culture and Utah sex education definitely contributes to this problem. And uh, let me reiterate, being a Mormon that grew up outside of Utah, I had never heard of this. No. So it seems to me it is mostly a Morador, Idaho, Utah, Arizona type thing. thing. Um, I'd never discussed with it. with any of like and it, that would totally be a con like a topic of conversation among missionaries guaranteed missionaries are not as good as you think they are in a lot of cases um and I, that was in central america so i i don't think that was really common outside of here um is it encouraged by church members no definitely not definitely not um How common is it, actually? Here's the thing about soaking. Nobody's going to want to admit to it, but a handful. We have one secondhand account from a person who has admitted that they did this. Okay. It is anecdotal, and I get that. But everything about soaking is anecdotal. It's all based on people's experiences. With that, I want to talk about jump humping. Um, you may have seen this TikTok. Um, I am absolutely skeptical about this happening. Um, I do not think you could find that many people who are okay with that kind of a situation. Um, and if you did, they would all be on the BYU football team and they would all, uh, just be going at doing the full, you know, home run type thing. Okay. But here's the thing also is in that TikTok, they talk about how this is happening in a BYU dorm room. And if you've watched our previous videos, you know the culture that exists at BYU. And the culture that exists there is based upon yeah. everyone telling Are you other. telling me that potentially seven people are in on it and okay? And nobody's reporting it to yeah. the honor code in office? In a dorm room? I don't think so. It, no way. Elsewhere? Yeah. So, not to talk shit on her on Funeral Potatoes. I think it's hilarious. It's funny. (laughs) There's no doubt about it. It's so funny. If it weren't funny, it wouldn't have gotten millions of views. It is. It's funny. If there's like one person that did this, I guess I wouldn't be totally shocked. But I do not think that this is like a regularly occurring thing at BYU. I don't think so. Like, But if you have a friend that's like willing to do that shit for you, I mean, that is like a true homie right there. Serious homie. Like. That is a friend that you will take to the end because that is like committed. Like, will you come do this? Like, that is like. Seriously, we just want to have a temple wedding 
And I just cannot wait any longer. Yep. Like that kind of situation. That's that's a true friend. Damn, that is this real friendship. Um, let's it's see. How often does pregnancy occur because of that? Lots of questions like, do they take pregnancy into account? And I think a lot of this, again, goes back to Utah sex education. But I also don't, you know, the soaking experience is going to depend <laughs> on the couple. And so in... In theory, in my mind with soaking, because we're just positioning it and we're not gyrating, then the typical thing that would happen during that kind of event isn't going to happen. That's my understanding. Not to say that they're so sexually repressed that it won't. True. But. (laughs) Unless there were pressure applied like you mentioned earlier maybe maybe i don't know but that that could be the thing that draws the line yeah but that's my thing with soaking is like we don't there's not discourse around like soaking make sure you have a condom on yeah there's no like wikipedia entry about it or anything so (laughs) like so knowledge is real hearsay and that and i mean that's part of the problem so are teens and young adults actually doing this and then you know, things are happening and those precautions aren't being taken because, you know, not only do we have pregnancy as a problem, as a potential consequence, but STIs and STDs as a possible consequence as well. So yeah. there's if, a whole yeah, aspect. Who knows? Maybe you're, he's just going around soaking with everybody and you just don't know it. That's the problem. So be see? careful who you soak with. It's true. Um, Why do people at BYU do dumb stuff like that? It's a great question. Um, is the repentance process any different? I would, uh, I don't want to use the word, but it's a P word. And being that the P word is happening during soaking, I imagine most bishops would say it's the same thing as the thing that's not, you're not supposed to do in Mormonism that can get your temple recommend taken away. So, in my mind, if I was a bishop, yeah, I, I would treat it the same I way. I don't think there's a grown-ass man out there that would be like, yeah, that's not sex. You're good. It's different. <laughs> like, I just, because yeah. it's happening, like, I can't imagine that they would make any type of distinction, especially with any type of sexual sin in Mormonism. When you're confessing things like that, it really, a lot of it does get lumped into the same category. I mean, you got the big one, obviously, but then you have all the other little things. But those are lots of people get punished pretty harshly yeah. for those things, too. So that goes back to Bishop Roulette, right? You don't really know what you're going to get. Yeah. I have a question. Do you soak garments on or garments off? Come on. I guess uh, the, if the dudes in, could do garments on, but. I was going to say they're not endowed. She's couldn't. not endowed. To, I mean, I guess she I could been, be, but. She ex-missionaries former mission returned missionaries there too. are you know i see all the dudes doing this being for like return missionaries like that's my opinion yeah so that is an important caveat to make too as far as punishment goes because if both parties so if the boy and the girl have both gone on a mission. It means they've gone through the temple, which means they're wearing the religious undergarments that we've talked about in other videos, which means they would not, they covenanted explicitly with God to not have sexual relations with anybody outside of marriage. That is not their lawfully wedded spouse. So the punishment for them is going to be much, much worse than two people who would either who aren't endowed, who didn't go on a mission. Yeah. Who Who, aren't wearing garments. Didn't make one of the big four uh, covenants. So so. as far as punishment goes, if he went on a mission and she didn't, and they do this, his punishment would likely look different than hers for a lot of reasons. Not the least of which Probably not. He's a man. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Probably not. He's got the priesthood, so he's more important. Um, how long do these soaking, soaking sessions usually last? How long can you go like how that? How long can you go? 
because it, it, here's my personal opinion on soaking. If you're going to if you're going to commit to doing that, if you're willing to go to that to those lengths to avoid it, you're already there. You might as well go all the way. Just do it. Like you're already so far. Do it. <laughs> you're at that point, you might as well just do it. So, uh, I don't really know. Is it like a comp like are you trying to do it quick cuz that's like I mean, the closest thing would you be leave doing it, there it as too fast long. as possible, right? But then, yeah, is it like, do you get like, uh, like wrinkles? I don't know. Okay, so the premise, <laughs> based on the term, my thought is that it would be for at least a little while. It's not like an in and out kind of experience. I mean, it is, but not quickly. After in and out, you know? Get a burger first. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, of it. <laughs> <laughs> like it has to sit there. That, yeah. that would be my I, I don't thought. Know. Yeah, but the I don't term, know. That, I guess if you brought in floating, the other, I don't know if that's as common a term, but. Uh, There's a few terms that, would be, that people have used. I've seen marinating. Marinating. Soaking. What's so the marinating is floating. Floating. Marinating and soaking would be I've kind seen of fermentation. Similar. That would be also along the same line. So that's my thought is it's not like a quick, a quick thing, but I don't know for sure. Do you think anyone who tries it doesn't just end up doing the deed anyway? My thought is this happens a lot of the time. Like. I, yeah. Just thinking of me, if we were, we, we did not full disclosure, do this. Never did that. Um, it, but if we were in that situation, I would just be like, fuck it. Why not? Because I think about when you're in that space, like when you're in that like emotional, sexual, hormonal things are happening type of place. You're not like, hmm, let me think with my Mormon brain. And yeah, you're going to be thinking with a different head, it? like not the one on your shoulder. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I, don't, I think a good Sorry, lot of the time, fruit. if the intent is to not, I it takes some serious restraint. That's what I'm saying here is you've got like. That iron will. I am impressed. Yeah. So <laughs> if you can do this and not. If, yeah. If, if this is the, the road that you choose to walk and you stick with that. It, it's impressive. You know, hats off to you. Is soaking permitted under the honor code? Definitely not. Not. Yeah. That is not honor code approved. No. Not explicitly not approved. But it falls under the law uh, of yeah, chastity. If you went to the yeah, if you went to the honor code office and they're like you're like, it's just soaking. Yeah, they that is not a defense. <laughs> Guaranteed. Someone <laughs> Someone said I can't decide if it sounds more like something sexual or like waterboarding. <laughs> and honestly, that's just one of the best comments in here. Yeah, it originated in Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> Thank you, CIA. Um, it's actually really common for uh, BYU graduates to be part of the CIA and the FBI. Just they stick to rules, man. Yeah. Okay, so there. This one was a good one. This is. I mean, it kind of goes back to sex education here. But is it true that some people do it in the belly button because they never learned about sex? <laughs> that sounds like something from like family guy or something yeah i think i've heard of like a dumb blonde joke about this before so i don't know i don't know but i will say anecdotally like at the u i did hear things like this where couples were doing it on the back end and couldn't understand why they weren't getting pregnant which Hmm. think about utah sex education which there is none Okay, so is that that outlandish? I don't know. If you think about Mormons who like rigidly follow the rules, so they don't watch anything that's R rated, maybe not even anything that's PG 13. No that pornography. There's a very, very small minority of people. No sexual material, no books, no nothing. In Mormon circles with Mormon friends who don't talk about this. Yeah. And if I I had a science class. They showed the human anatomy and they blurred. At BYU-Idaho, they blurred the genitalia. 
So there are some people who may have never been exposed to not even the sight of the opposite sex's anything. anatomy. Yeah. Human anatomy, so, you guys. Well, wasn't it? Didn't that happen in your art class too? Didn't they blur some of the art in your art class? No, they had to. Uh, side like a, a little tangent. They had to just to illustrate kind of the sexual repression that goes on in my art class, or it was a humanities class. Yeah. They had to have an explicit lesson where they said. Art with nudity is not pornography. Which is shocking. We're talking about like <laughs> classical era Baroque art, Renaissance art, I guess is probably a better um, descriptor of that kind of stuff. But like they had to expressly be like, this isn't porn, y'all. Don't worry. That's the kind of thing that's happening here. And so when you combine all of these things together, the premise of something like soaking really isn't that unheard of. It's not yeah. outlandish to me to think that, especially like teenagers, I remember what it was like to be a teenager. Oh, hell yeah. So when, you know, hormones, those special little hormones are at their max, like it's not, yeah. it's, I, one hundred percent believe that it happens. Absolutely. I also one hundred percent believe that there is going to be few and far between people who would actually be willing to admit that they did this. <laughs> yeah, it's up to it. And this is coming from people. I mean, we were both very sexually repressed while we were dating, mm-hmm. and we skirted the lines for sure. But we uh, never did it. We never. Yeah, we never went all the way, and we definitely never soaked. <laughs> no, we did so. not. And I mean, this is. They're soaking, and then there's also other, like, this isn't new to this generation. Soaking might be something that, you know, millennials have kind of taken under their wing. But not to say that there weren't other things, like his parents' friends who were going to go to Vegas and get married. Yeah, this is, uh, that was in the 90s. Right? There were also, um, we've also heard from people about gazing parties, there are some people in the ex Mormon subreddit who have shared that they did those types of things at BYU. Where you would just look at each other yep. naked. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So do you? <laughs> <laughs> there are so many variations of this, and really, it's probably going to depend on the person and the couple. So likely, yeah. there's so many variations of this that we're not even gonna yeah touch on. So the Mormon straights, they are not okay. This soaking, and it, it's it's funny, but it's also extremely sad because soaking is. is a symptom of a larger the extreme issue. <laughs> sexual repression that happens in high demand religions. And I'll say high demand religions because Mormonism is not unique in that aspect, but we are most familiar with Mormonism. So yeah. it's it's sad that people have to participate in or express their sexuality in such an absurd way. It makes sense. I mean, people will go, I'm people who are, they will go to lengths to, to do that. And with social constructs that surround Mormonism and things like that, they are going to try to skirt the boundaries as much as they can while they still try to just fulfill a basic human need for a lot of people. Yeah. So, Well, it's not to say that there aren't people out there who, you know, would even go all the way and would lie to a bishop about it. Those people are out there, too. Absolutely. If, you know, it would be absolutely devastating to be in a position where you weren't intending to, you wanted to wait and you made a mistake. And instead, the consequence is socially devastating and embarrassing Absolutely. because your family is going to know what happened. His family is going to know what happened. Your friends, your like the people in your ward, your bishop, yeah. like everybody knows why you ain't getting married. Yeah. There's blame to be placed and oh, well she's just a yeah, well, think about X, it. Y or Z thing. Think about or it. He's just a sleeping around or yes. Yeah, and so. Mormons will come at us and be like, Oh my God, they can still get married. And like, yes, they can still get married civilly. They could, they can oh, yeah. do that. However, but it is a scandal. They cannot get married in the temple. Yeah. They cannot time. get sealed. So they can go get married, sure, by yeah. law, civilly, but they're not going to be able to go to the temple. And that is the problem. 
Yeah. So they can repent and they can go later, but but it's going to be the delayed. damage is done. Yep. By that point, so all over young adults who just want to do it and can't because Mormons say that God says it's bad. So yeah, I'll here throw we this are. Little meme up here. Pause to read it. I thought it was funny. Uh, somebody in the Discord shot shout out to them. Just shared it with us. It was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, it's and this is from what I can tell a primarily homo, uh, from this is from what I can tell primarily a heterosexual kind of thing. Here There's not in a Utah. whole lot of yeah variation um, that yeah. we've heard about because you know straights yeah. are struggling over here. So yeah, and well, I would want to be like a double a double thing for LGBTQ plus yeah. people to be engaging in that. So that would just add a whole other layer. Well, and to risk to being it. outed at BYU and absolutely. Yeah. So could that happen there? I don't sure. know. I don't know. Yeah. Nothing is out of the realm of possibility here. Like we've said, I hope we were able to answer some of your questions, but truly there is so much of this that is just insane. And I know it sounds totally ridiculous, but it is definitely a thing. And there are definitely variations that aren't as popular (laughs) as soaking that are happening long before soaking was ever a thing. So sexual repression in Mormonism is not new. Yeah. TikTok is new. TikTok <laughs> is new. Thank God for TikTok for spreading the good word about this unethical treatment of humans, honestly. And ex Mormons are very vocal, especially on TikTok. And, and on YouTube. Soaking is not like, you know, when I think of Mormon Stories podcast and John Dillon, I'm sure that's not like the first thing that he would like to talk about <laughs> definitely not <laughs> it's podcast so this is definitely more of we an off the, the cuff dirty topic work. yeah so that's why it makes sense why it's it has done so well on tiktok so yeah if you didn't know now you know and i'm sorry sorry we um yeah a lot of people life. have been asking us about it um i've mentioned before when we did tiktok live regularly it would come up just about Constantly. every time we did it. Multiple and, times in each live. Like, yeah. All and the time. usually we would say, we're going to tell you about soaking at 930 MDT. So if you want to hear about it, that's the one time we're going to talk about it. And then or, we're never bringing it up again. We're not bringing it up after that. Uh, so, <laughs> so You can't. It is on Urban Dictionary. So you, you can yeah. tell your friends to look it up there if you don't want to actually explain it. But yeah, that's what we did a lot too. So this is an embarrassing part of Mormonism, and I am ashamed to be part of it. Have been part of it. To have been part of it. Yeah, we are no longer part of it. Just in case <laughs> anybody was wondering, we are officially no longer. We threw away our salvation. So we did. Yeah, but there is still shame. That there we is once, still shame attached to it. We were once Absolutely. involved, and dedicated our lives to this religion that thinks yeah. that soaking is the exception to the rule. So. <laughs> There you have it. There you have it, folks. Thanks for hanging around if you hung around. Um, If you haven't checked out our Etsy store, Happy Brain Collective, you can find it in the description. I'll plug the Discord. Again, that's also in the description. And our socials, Instagram and TikTok. You can find us at at Jordan and McKay. We also have our cool patrons on Patreon. Oh, yeah. Hit up the Patreon. We are going to be having a Halloween party uh, on the 30th. So with our super awesome top tier patrons. So if that's something you would like to join in on, definitely go check out the, the Patreon in the description. Other than that, thank you everybody for watching and we will see you next time. 